My name is Julia, but my name is Islam is uh, Aisha. Uh, I'm from Moscow, and uh, my lifestyle before um, enter Islam it was sim a simple student with uh, a lot of uh, simple things that young people live. It's friends, it's cinemas, it's studying. Just join, join our life without any ideas in your mind. But what does it mean life uh, without any thinking, with, without thinking what it will be in, uh, when we will die? Uh, one day, me and my sister, we understand that we need God, that, but we couldn't find it, we couldn't find answer in these questions in any book, in, in, from anybody. And this uh, truth, truth God, Allah, we, we, found, we found, I found, I found it in Quran. Thanks for people that uh, helped me to find this way uh, to mom of my husband and my husband. Now we, I know that I can live with Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. A lot of people know that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, not useful food like pork or, uh, or drink, you know, drink alcohol. Now, when you enter Islam, you understand that uh, it's really not useful and Allah told you not to eat it. And uh, people drink alcohol to, to relax or to feel good. Uh, after Islam, you understand that it's not need to make haram. It's possible to pray, to keep fasting, and you will feel good. You will feel that uh, Allah is you, and uh, you will feel all this uh, s uh, simple life things, but without haram. You will feel. S uh, you will. Um, uh, you will follow sauna to say Bismillah rahman rahim when you are going to eat. Oh, when you get, uh, when you eat, you say Alhamdulillah. When you're going to eat, uh, um, you will say Bismillah. Uh, these things are not done before Islam, but when you, but when you already in Islam, you feel God and you just follow it. You don't think that you cannot without you. Or, for example. Uh, uh, food, uh, halal food. You know, when you go out, uh, when you go to Europe, there is uh, not uh, food, not halal. But you, uh, it's very easy for you not to eat it because it's not cotton with name of Allah. My attention that I take when I eat, it's. Uh, I understand that uh, Allah didn't give anything without reason. Uh, it's not just for fun. Allah give me food that I can uh, wake in the morning and pray Fakr. Allah uh, uh, give me food because I can take power to make a lot of useful things during the day. Allah uh, give me uh, food that I can remember that I have it. A lot of people don't have this food. I can share my food or I can give food for somebody who, who is fasting. I can um, share or uh, make something uh, and, and when I give and I will say Alham I tell uh, Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen. Back in Australia, something unexpected struck me. While talking with some of my friends about that experience, we wondered about how well we knew about the history of Muslims in Australia. 
we felt the sense of duty and urge to uncover how deep Muslim history goes in this country. Thus, we went on a journey. And this is our story. It was in the 1800s when the new founded colonies of Australia began to benefit from the arrival of the Afghan Kamaliyas. Although referred to as Afghans, they came not just from Afghanistan, but from areas which are in present-day Pakistan. Kamaliyas were known for their ability to penetrate the harsh interior of Australia. Camels would carry such things as building supplies, food provisions and drought relief to remote areas of Australia. Among significant developments, they facilitated laying down much needed train lines throughout the country. Furthermore, they assisted with the overland telegraph line, which crossed 2,500 kilometres and connected us with the rest of the world. Between probably 1860 and 1920, I would say somewhere between two and 4,000 Afghan Kamaliyas came to Australia. And of course they had a fundamental role in um, assisting with nation building in Australia because um, big infrastructure projects like the uh, overland telegraph um, and um, some of the rail lines, of course, the, I mean, the transport, the, the heavy lifting and transport and carrying was, was undertaken by camel trains. Well, of course, uh, the Burke and Wills expedition, you know, and the, the first use of camels and, and, and the first presence of Afghan, Afghans. And all, the Afghans were also involved fundamentally as hawkers, uh, which were like the mobile department stores of outback Australia, resupplying um, outback stations, um, also police stations, uh, with all sorts of uh, goods, haberdashery, uh, lollies, sweets, um, they were a familiar figure going around the Australian outback. Cameliers had been brought in in the 1850s, 60s into South Australia to open up uh, South Australia and it did, they did extend into Broken Hill when it was being found between 1883 and 1888. It was, became a uh, town in 1888. They were very active in those early days and covered this whole area and they did open this mosque for their service, their uh, prayers. But as kids, they used to come here and the water used to be out here for the people praying to wash before they went in. And these little deers used to get these three corner jacks and throw in this water until the old fellas woke up. Now this ante room is only just in the last 12 months the floor has been taken out and the cement put in. Uh, inside here is still the original floor, wooden floor, which is on the ground, which as you can uh, imagine is the reason that we've got lots of rust and the building's deteriorating. So the little ante room has got a few interesting artefacts around uh, and it it creates an atmosphere for visitors who are non-Muslim. This is our prayer room. Our hymn room used to, I presume, pray from here. And as you can see, this is it. <laughs> 